in every facet of your life, you have to recognize when God is ministering seed to you is not just financial. It's also the word. Because while he's ministering that seed to you, something is coming in the future where you're going to have to sow that word in your decisions. There is a ministry of seed sowing that comes from Jehovah God that has the power to subdue all your temptations. There is seed being ministered to you every day. And you have to respect the seed ministry of God. Because if you don't sow the seed that he ministered to you. You have to start ministering to Satan with your existence. Are you catching that? If. If you don't sow the seed that God is giving you, which is his word as well. If you don't sow the seed that he's giving you in your personality, in your behavior, in your conduct, conduct, that ministry of God is going to be canceled. And you have to now start a ministry unto devils. Wow, I just saw something in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to find it. I just saw something. The Holy Spirit just showed me something. Wow. I'm going to find it too. I'm going to find it. Yeah, there it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look what it says right here, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Oh my goodness, wait a minute, wait a minute. And not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Oh my goodness. Wait, let's go to verse 21. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the devil's, the table of devils. Look at verse 22. Now, saints, this is one of the most powerful texts in the word of God. It's one of the most. It says, do, you, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Wait, what kind of question is this? What kind of question is this, saints? Church, what kind of question is this? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? It's telling you that when God sees you sacrificing unto the devil, ministering unto the devil, and he made you to minister unto him, it's saying that it provokes the Lord to jealousy. When God sees you serving lust and he made you to walk in love. He see you serving fear. He made you to walk by faith. He see you serving weakness and he made you to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. When he sees that you are serving and sacrificing to devils. Now, I, I, I want you to catch this. It says... I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You notice it didn't say devil, the devil. So devils are different than the devil. So you say, well, prophet, well, who are, what are the devils? The devils are like the Peter, James, and John of the satanic kingdom. Devils, 
they carry the name of the devil upon themselves. That is their office because they have mastered that same warped thinking and concept of, uh, of the devil. So these are beings that were, were the top protégés of the devil. So the devil will send them out instead of coming solo, will send them to you because they have enough of satanic training, devilish training to echo his presence. While the devil is not even nowhere around, the devil's impartation is influential to every fiber of their being. So it's like you're encountering the devil. But look, it says devils, which means that they're more than one. So when you don't let yourself sacrifice unto the Lord, you sacrifice to devils, which means it's more than one. It's pride, it's jealousy, it's envy, it's strife, it's competition, insecurity, it's prayerlessness, doubt, unbelief. See, it's devils. So now sacrifice means that I am taking the initiative to invest. My time, my efforts, my money, my decisions, my emotions into this. So it's telling you that when you don't invest your time, your money, your decisions, your body into the spirit. You invest it into devils. Verse 22 said, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? That means that God gets jealous that he invested so much into you and Satan gets to use you. God gave you your eyes and your eyes watching the wrong thing. God gave you your ears, your ears listening to the wrong thing. God gave you your heart and your heart is pondering wrong things. God gave you your mouth and your mouth is speaking wrong things. God gave you time and your time is being used for wrong things. God gave you your body and your body being used for wrong things. It says, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Hallelujah. Are we stronger than he? That second question is a very scary question. That's why the word says, fear not the one that could kill your body. But fear the one that could cast both soul and body into hell. That's the answer to this question when it says, are we stronger than he? Because even if you provoke him to jealousy, he still has the strength to send you to the rightful place that you picked through your choices. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. We're coming into a time where people will start saying that hell doesn't exist. I mean, you're going to see it. When I say that, I mean, you're going to start hearing people start to say hell is not a physical place. The grace of God is so amazing. He will never send you to his place. You're going to start hearing that. There's going to come a day where you will see that people that are saying they're Christians, you'll see them merge with Muslims and you'll see them merge for one, even the Catholics. The Catholics are going to merge with Muslims. Everybody going to merge with Muslims and it's going to be it's going to be a theology that there are there, there are people that's going to heaven that's not receiving Jesus and they don't believe everything that's in the Bible, they're still going to heaven because they are, they are, 
they are following another way that God gave them. God gave them this way. It's not like the way that you are familiar with, but God gave it to them. See, some Christians are really Muslims because they believe that if they reject going to Nineveh, there's another way to be prophetic. <laughs> wow. And, and if they don't go to the cross, there's another way to, 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 to drink the cup. That if they don't hide by the brook sheriff, there's another Zarephath woman somewhere else. That if Isaiah say that you're about to die, there's another prophet that's going to tell you, no, I got the power to give you life. And God has another way to keep me alive. And this is the doctrine of devils. No Malaysia lies in the neo-ranso. Serele zuvayanon. Look what it's telling you right here. It says that I will, I will not that you should have fellowship with devils. Why is Apostle Paul saying, I, I hope that you don't have fellowship with devils? Because when you start fellowshipping with devils, it means that now they are the impartation of what godliness is. They are the teachers. Imagine fallen beings that failed God telling you how to succeed with God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Imagine them telling you how to make it to heaven and they got kicked out of heaven. Have you ever taken the time to think about this? They got evicted and they're telling you how to get inducted. You ever seen somebody get kicked out the club or something or like a party or anything? The bouncer kicked them out the party. Would you really walk up to them and say, can you get me inside of that party? They just lost their access. They just got embarrassed and driven out. And imagine them counseling someone and saying, I could get you into the party. Whoa. Whoa. I will not that you have fellowship with devils. Saints, when you worry, you're fellowshipping with devils. See, fellowship is brain activity. Listen to me. Fellowship happens in the brain before it happens with the mouth. Your vocabulary is not the first place of fellowship. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. I'm teaching good. Your brain is, is the first place where fellowship is the origin of fellowship. So even fellowshipping with God is not firstly the mouth. It's firstly the mind. Because Zachariah's mouth had spoken to God days before he doubted that his wife could conceive a child. So Zacharias believed that he was in the elements and the reins of fellowship. But his brain had doubt. His brain had unbelief. His brain did not have confidence in God's power. Let me ask you a question. How is it that Zacharias, being a man of God, how did he 
question the ability of God to put a child inside of an older woman. Let me show you a plot twist. I'm going to show you something that you never thought about before like this. I'm going to show you a big plot twist. Abram and Sarah came before Zacharias and Elizabeth. So one thing that you could catch was that Zacharias was not in his word. Because what Gabriel was telling him God was about to do, God had already did it before. So the fact that he began to even let it utter, you know that he did not Psalm 119. Thy word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So David was saying that the only way that man could overcome sin in the future is if they hid in something that God said in the past. So God, he lives in your past, teaching you things so that when you get to the future, you don't disrespect him. And when the future becomes the present, you have to become a present to God and you have to gift him with the recollection of your knowledge. So what happens when you don't sin? You say, Lord, your word is gold and I protected the gold mine in my gold mind. And so now my gold behind ain't going to sin against you because I done properly dealt with the value of what you gave me in yesterday. So now today has come. There's no temptation overtaking you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful that he will not suffer you to be tempted above what you will, but he'll provide a way of escape. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 is talking about, that you may be able to bear the temptation. There's no temptation overtaking you, which is uh, except which is common to man. Which means that everything that the devil will oppose you with and suggest to you, God already talked to you about it a long time ago. So when it shows up, God knows, oh, you wasn't really listening to me. Because if you was, I was emphasizing this before the emphasis. The emphasis happened according to an event. So hereby, I want you to hear this. Remember what I'm telling you. How are you dealing with the seed ministry of God? My goodness. Because he ministers seed to the sower. And see, you're, you're used to um, the, the money being ministered to you for you to sow the money into your man of God. You're used to that. But what about the seed of the word of God that is ministered to you for you to sow it in your attitude, for you to sow it in your gratitude, for you to sow it in your words, your facial expressions, your bodily conduct, your tone of voice, your relationships with people, how you conduct yourself in the workplace, how you live at home by yourself, what you do, how you spend your time, what you look at on your computer, what you look at on your phone, on your TV. How do you spend your moments daily? How are you dealing with the seed ministry of God to you? Because he ministers seed to the sower. 
and he wants you to sow into the spirit. So he's telling you things on how to sow into the spirit, how to invest yourself into being light and not darkness, how to invest yourself into being power and not weakness, how to invest yourself into being wisdom and not foolishness, love and not hate, strength and not struggle, blessing and not cursing. First Corinthians chapter 10. Look what it says in verse one. You should not be ignorant. I hope that you're not ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. He's talking about the glory of God's presence. That cloud, he, he used the cloud as a symbol. And all passed through the sea. Look at verse two. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud. Wait, 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 hold up, back up. Wait a minute. Maybe they made a mistake. Because I'm sure that this should have said God, correct? No, 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 no. The truth of the word says we were all baptized unto Moses. This in the New Testament. God has a body, a person on earth. He baptizes you unto them. That's how you are baptized in Christ. Because Christ is meaning an anointed one. And his anointing unto you. They were baptized unto a man of God, a God man. The ground opened up because they failed the God man. Korah died because Korah failed the God man. So why is Apostle Paul talking about this and we in the New Testament? Remember, Apostle Paul, they told us that you are a New Testament teacher. So why are you talking about Moses in the New Testament? Because I didn't come to get rid of the law of the prophets. I came to fulfill it. If somebody says I didn't come to get rid of something, that means that he didn't get rid of it. Duh. If, if somebody walked into your house and said, hey, um, I was cleaning up today, but I didn't get rid of your cornflakes. I just fulfilled your pantry with more cereals. Does that mean that they got rid of your cornflakes? Oh, uh, no. They just told you I didn't get rid. That's why in Ephesians it said that he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men and unto some he gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some teachers and some evangelists and some pastors. He said for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of, for, for the edifying of the body, for the work of ministry, that you might come to that perfect man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So after the resurrection, the Lord is placing a system and saying, I'm going to make apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists. And I'm, going to make, I'm going to make these sections and I'm going to place these offices on a person. And then I'm going to send that person to you and they are sent to perfect you. That means that you ain't right. They are there to show you how to become right. Then they are there to edify you. They're there to build you up. That means that you've been torn down. That's their job. <laughs> uh, wow. That's their job. And imagine you fellowship with devils. The devils will tell you, no, don't listen to them. God has a plan for your life. 
don't take in the seed that they're trying to sow into your belly. Don't get impregnated with that counsel. Don't receive it. God has a blessing with your name on it. With your name on it. With your name on it. And when you're not fellowshipping with God, the fellowship of the devil it, it, it seems so sweet. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this person getting on my nerves. They getting on my last nerves. As a matter of fact, they irritate me. So, yeah, I, it, it's good for my eyes. It's good for my ears to hear this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. I received that. Fellowshipping with devils is a very dangerous thing. And there are some people that they don't do it through sex. They don't do it through drugs. They do it through religiosity. They do it through having daily devotionals. Some people do not fellowship with devils by gossip. By slander, some people fellowship with devils through forms of godliness. They hand out pamphlets, they join a building, they do different things, all in the name of God. We know that the chief priests, which were pastors in the day of Jerusalem, we know that they were fellowshipping with devils because every time that Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you, son. Rise and be healed. Stretch out your hand. They got angry. Every time a miracle happened where somebody got set free and the Lord said, oh, wait, wait, wait. How Y'all getting mad that this man got healed on the Sabbath. But how many of you all, if your donkey or your animal was inside of a ditch, wouldn't you go and lift him up even if it was the Sabbath day? And the Lord was trying to open up their eyes. You're getting mad by saying that this is a holy day. But somebody is being made whole. And it bothers you. What made the day holy? God made the day holy. Well, God is love. So God shows love and you're angry. But these were the head pastors of Jerusalem. And they were fellowshipping with devils. There's a fellowship with devils that you're not murdering somebody physically. You're not doing the, the things that people obviously say are evil, but you're religious. You play your gospel music every time you get inside your car. You blast your radio. You jerk like you have the Holy Ghost. And all this schizophrenia, all this weird behavior, man say, this is a quickening. When really, David said, quicken me according to your word, not according to no. <laughs> what? But the doctrine of devils have even changed the meaning of quickening. That people are looking like complete fools. When the definition of being quickened is when God could convict you about something he doesn't like and bring you back into the likeness of what he expects out of your person. But yet we see all this foolishness. It's the fellowship of devils. 
devils have made a complete laughing stock out of people that had the potential to be friends of God because instead of them following the spirit of God, they drift off into what will feed their flesh religiously. The dangerous thing about the fellowship of devils religiously is that you'll be so enveloped in the religious stuff that you're doing that you'll say it's impossible for my heart to be wrong because I prayed for a whole hour. It's impossible for my heart to be wrong because I fast two times a week. The Bible said that there was a tax collector and there was a Pharisee. And the Pharisee got up on the mountain. The parable was the Pharisee say, oh, I, I fast two times. I give my tithes. Oh, I'm so faithful. I'm so good. And the tax collector, which is the cruelest of people, they would be so wicked to people. They have no mercy on people. He beat his chest and said, God, be merciful to me. And Jesus said, the tax collector went down justified. So while this man was fasting twice a week, who was he fellowshipping with? Devils. While he was giving money, who was he fellowshipping with? Devils. Hallelujah. So Father, I receive your mighty power to fellowship with only your table. See, these are prayers of the spirit. Remember I told you when you pray in the Holy Ghost, there are words that you're supposed to speak in the understanding. Understanding means your language, your, your natural language. And these words, they are formed out of your prayer in tongues. See, this prayer can't come from flesh. Lord, I receive power and grace from you to only partake and be a partaker of only your table, Lord. And I choose to only drink your cup by your grace. Father, I receive grace from you not to provoke you to jealousy. You see, these are prayers of the spirit. You can't locate this in the flesh. So what is this ka ba 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 and you never even locate the interpretation of the tongue. Now, Father, I receive your mighty power to fellowship only with you. Thank you, Lord, for sanctifying me by your truth. Your word is truth. Thank you for sanctifying me by your truth. For your word is truth. And I love your truth. And your truth makes me free in ways that I've never imagined. Your truth makes me free in ways that I've never fathomed. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God who is my truth. Hallelujah to the risen lamb that is my truth evermore. Amen and amen. So much power is on the earth from the Holy Ghost right now. So much power. So much power. One time, the Lord has shown me a dream. And I went to go pray for somebody and they flew in the air. I went to go pray for them, and they flew in the air like an explosion, like, like a bomb went off. 
Saints, there is a power that God, he, he has reserved it because um, that power, if it comes on human flesh, even the human flesh, But that power will even cause somebody's physical body to fly. Saints, I don't know if you all remember this, but remember when we was doing the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference at Dr. Murdoch's church. That, that night, I think I had on a white. I had on that white. Yeah, yeah, I had on the white. And I had on a, 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 a high collar shirt. And when I went to go pray for a, a person, they flew in the air. I don't know if you remember that. But I'm saying this was just something in the past. But I'm saying I've seen in literal dreams and visions around February the 17th or 16th. I woke up, but while I was inside of the heavenlies, I heard angels gather around the throne to present a new song to the Father. And it was, the song didn't say nothing else but hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was a hallelujah song. And they all were singing on one accord together. And their voices sound like nothing you have heard on earth. They creatively birthed a song and wanted to present it before the Lord. And I listened to the song all while my eyes and my body was unconscious. And when I woke up, I knew the song. And it was a hallelujah song. It wasn't saying nothing else. Angels, they don't even get weary with the Lord because he's so fascinating. It's man on the earth. They get distracted with this natural life and things start taking you away. And you get tricked. The Lord is the fascination of existence. The Lord is the fascination of existence. And when you get that established in yourself, you will never have another sad day. Because even if you go through trials and you go through issues in life, you will still have the seeking of God and the pursuit of God. And that is will pit everything in perspective and bring the true joy that you're looking for. Angels, they stay fascinated with God. You ever want to know, how is Michael still serving the Lord after Michael saw what Lucifer did? Why is Gabrielle still serving after he saw what, what Lucifer did? How is the wisdom angel she's still serving after seeing what Lucifer and the one-third of the angels did? How are they still serving? Because, not because they're serving, because they're slaves. They're serving because they are completely in love with him. They're in love with the Lord. That's why they're there. They're not there because they have to be. They want to be. Gabrielle loves going on missions for God. Even when Zacharias gave him that 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 weird and strange and awkward and evil moment, he still was excited about giving messages. They are excited. That's why Isaiah had such a powerful anointing on him because he said, here I am, Lord, send me. When people volunteer for the Lord to use them, use them those are the people that have the power. Those are the people that have the power. Those are the people that have the power. Those are the people that have the glory of God. They go from glory to glory and faith to faith because they are using their time 
to volunteer unto God. Oh, it's mighty, saints. Oh, it's mighty. It's so heavenly. It's so heavenly. It's so heavenly. It is so heavenly. It is so heavenly. It's so heavenly. It's so heavenly. It's so heavenly. It is so heavenly. It is so heavenly. It's so heavenly. It's so heavenly. 